Hi, this again is Rob Kelly and this very short PowerPoint video is about the degrees of belief people have or the strength of belief people have in a particular area. Particularly important when we're talking about locus of control scores and people changing their beliefs around internality and externality. If you look at the diagram in front of you now, when a person first changes a belief, let's say a person changes a belief intellectually, they're coming to us for Thrive or, or they're a, a Thrive consultant going through training, as we've seen in the past, and they start off and they do the quiz and they score somewhere around 20, then a couple of weeks later they talk through it again, then now they, now they say they score five or six. It's very unlikely that after a week or two they've got their score down from 20 down to five or six. Or if they have, it's likely that the only change that's taken place at that time is an intellectual one. So for example, maybe I used to believe in ghosts and now after having read the book and challenging that, I actually don't really believe they are ghosts. They must be something else. That's an intellectual change. That's not a very fixed change, not a very permanent, not a very weighted change. That sort of flimsy belief could easily be switched back the other way again. If, for example, I had a sleepless night tonight and thought I saw something in the house, I could easily go back to believing in ghosts again, for example. So when people first change their beliefs, particularly when they're going through the Thrive Programme or, or similar, at first when they change their beliefs, they're quite flimsy. What they've done, in effect, is start an entirely new beliefs wall, haven't they? Go back to chapter one of the book again. They've created a brand new beliefs wall, like the smoker's beliefs wall, and there's one brick in it. That's not a very big belief system. It's not a very strong, secure belief system. They've got one brick in it. Ghosts don't exist. It was nonsense. Now, a beliefs wall that's only one brick tall or one brick wide is something that could easily be changed with the weather. So the moment someone has changed intellectually a belief or has come to a different understanding of a belief, they need to firm that belief change up somehow. If you think about someone going through the locus control quiz and they change their answer from I don't believe I can run a marathon or climb Everest to I do believe I can climb a marathon or run Everest. If this belief change is important to them in their general progress going through Thrive, i.e. the goals they're heading for in some way, shape or form require hard effort or physical effort or certain amount of sporting prowess, they want to prove that to themselves now. At the moment, it's just a, a vagrant belief. And yeah, I believe I could do that. Backed up by what? What evidence is there to prove it? The last time you ran anywhere, you ran three miles 20 years ago. I know you say you can run a marathon, but do you really believe it? How deep is that belief? How strong and secure are the foundations of that belief? When the person says it to you, yeah, I could do, that. do they look you square in the face? Do they look you straight in the eye? And are they confident they mean it? What level of confidence do they have about their belief? What level of certainty do they have about their belief? I might say to someone, okay, so I'm drinking a cup of tea right now and it's a brown mug. How confident are you that that's a brown mug of tea? Oh, 100% Bob, they say. I say, you, you smelt my tea, you've seen me drink it and you can see it's a brown mug. Would you bet £10,000 that that's a brown mug? Yeah, no problem at all, absolutely. Okay, would you bet £10,000 you can now run a marathon? Ah, oh, maybe not. They believe it, but their belief isn't that strong yet. It's a weak belief at the moment. So how would they improve that belief? By putting some effort into that area and increasing their skills and resources. So get them to start jogging. Get them to do two or three miles a couple of times a week. Now, even just doing that for a couple of weeks, doing a couple of miles a couple of times a week, that's enough to cement in the fact that they can run. They can overcome their anxiety about running, they can overcome their lack of physical fitness, and in a couple of weeks they can get up to running a couple of miles, that would cement that belief in nicely. All right, it's not a marathon, it's not 26 miles, but it's a start and it's adding some bricks to that wall. 
So the next time they look at you in the face, say, yeah, I can do that. And they say, well, how do you, how do you know? Prove to me you can run a marathon. Well, I've done five or six K a couple of times now, and although it's hard, it's getting easier. And I'm building up my, my strength and my timekeeping for running every day. Good. Move on to the next thing. So a lot of people, when they first go through Thrive, and they do start changing their locus of control score, will actually be changing it initially intellectually. Initially intellectually. This is also, of course, what happens probably with, with Thrive consultants because they, when they first go through the program, they first change their score because they're looking at it every day. They become so adept at answering the questions and hopefully you become so adept at, at knowing the right answers to give your clients, your trainees, and you understand the research behind the questions Thrive consultants generally probably get a lower score more quickly than your average client. But probably because of that, it's likely to be quite intellectual. So if you're watching this now and think, oh my God, I've got my score down from 22 down to 6 in the space of a week or in the space of even a month, that's probably quite a flimsy change. Are you evidencing your new low score by the fact you've made significant changes in your life? What have you done with your life since you reduced your score from 22 down to six. Because actually your self-esteem should have gone through the roof. Has it? If it hasn't, then those beliefs aren't very strong. Your social anxiety should have disappeared through the floor at such change. Has it? If it hasn't, then probably those, those beliefs aren't that strong. I was talking to a trainee the other day and he said to me on his second session, do you know, after our conversation last week, Rob, I definitely, I, I no longer believe in ghosts. I've, I've thought about what you said, and of course, it's got to be nonsense. I said, good, well done. I said, how confident are you about that, though? He said, oh, no, I, I don't believe them anymore. And I said, okay, we're sitting here now. If a ghost walked through that wall right now and talked to both of us, what would you do? And he said, I'd look at you, and I would shrug my shoulders and think, oh, my God, Rob, we got it wrong. I said, right, so the slightest bit of evidence and I use the word evidence in inverted commas there, the slightest bit of evidence, and you change your belief that goes straight away. Therefore, it was a very flimsy belief change he'd had. I went on to say to him, look, I don't believe in ghosts, and I'm incredibly confident about that belief. I would bet you a million pounds, I would bet you my life, that ghosts don't exist. Therefore, I could sleep in a haunted house at night and see all kind of magical and mystical things. I'm still not going to think, oh my God, they're ghosts, they're real. I'm going to think, oh my God, this house is old. Isn't it making a lot of noise? Isn't the light funny in here? This is some kind of trick. Because I don't believe in ghosts. I cannot possibly see a ghost. Therefore, I have to interpret it as something else. So we're looking for people to get strong, secure, deep, stable belief changes, not flimsy ones. Also, it's probably quite easy to change a belief when you're seeing a Thrive Consultant once a week and you've got the comfort of that and the backup of that. It's probably quite easy to change those beliefs. But what's going to happen when that client's discharged from training and a month later they haven't got that support? Is it possible, is it plausible that some of their beliefs are going to swing back the other way and they're going to look back over the fence again? We know this to be true because of people that come back sometimes months later. Once you make a belief change, you need to find substantial evidence and experience, personal experience, skills and resources to validate and verify that change, to really cement it in. To the point where you don't believe something, you know it. I know ghosts don't exist. I don't believe it. I know it. I know it with my life that that is a fact. Therefore, that's a very, very robust internal belief. I've used the word evidence in inverted commas a couple of times so far. Personal experience is not evidence. Every single person watching this video, every single person in the world has personal experiences that other people won't have shared and won't agree with and will see completely differently. A personal experience is not evidence. 
So if someone said, oh, I definitely saw a ghost, I definitely went to a medium when they talked to Elvis, I definitely, you know, this happened to me or that's what happened to me, or I saw this, I saw that, I experienced that, it doesn't mean it's true. It means they think they experienced it. It means they believe it. Most of the world believes in one or more gods. It doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean it's true. It means they believe it. So an individual's personal experience isn't evidence. That's just their experience. And if they're experiencing something and they're processing it in an incredibly external magical way, then they're going to come up with some external magical reason for it, some magical attribution. If someone's deeply external and a little bit have a belief in the paranormal and superstition and they hear some strange noises at night in their house because of their belief system they're quite likely to um, believe that it's some kind of ghost or spiritual activity or their great dead granny come back to visit them if they're very internal that thought wouldn't even enter their mind they're likely to think it's just the floorboards creaking or the bricks expanding or shrinking due to the, the pressure or the, or the heat or the cold. If they're internal and a bit paranoid, they might think it's a burglar. If they're internal and a pipe fitter, they might be thinking about the copper in the pipes. If they're a builder, they might be thinking about the brickwork, they might be thinking about the paintwork. If they're a window fitter, they might be thinking about the wood and the, and the coefficient of linear expansion in wood compared to brickwork or something. Everyone interprets things in different ways. Generally speaking, internal people will look for an internal attribution for something. External people will look externally. This is why you want the change of belief to be strong. You want a strong, stable, deeply held belief, a secure belief that's not going to be changed in two minutes. It's not going to be changed just because you think you see a ghost one night. If you don't believe in ghosts and it's a strong, secure belief, then you could even see a ghost and it wouldn't change your mind. Someone needs to change their beliefs to strong, secure beliefs in order to thrive. Flimsy beliefs won't help at all because the moment that person meets hardship or meets a difficult time or something similar, they're going to immediately and quickly fall back the other way and go back to being external again. You need, when you're taking someone through Thrive, and they've changed some beliefs, you want to ask them to validate that for you, prove it to you, how have they done that, give you some evidence to show that. If they're important beliefs, you don't want them to back it up. You want them to do something, to get some skills and resources, to get some experiences that back up that belief, so they're very confident in it. One thing I'm going to do very soon is to um, create an online locus of control quiz, the same one that we've got at the moment, the general locus of control quiz, but instead of people having an agree and disagree, it's having a great agree and disagree on a scale of one to ten. So instead of getting yes or no black or white answers, we're getting degrees of belief. And I think this will be a good way, particularly for Thrive consultants, to realise perhaps how external, deep down, some of them really still are in relation to some of their beliefs. Because having to answer agree or disagree negates some of the strength of some of these beliefs. Anyway, that's it for now. There is a PDF uh, attached to this if you want to download that to use with your clients and trainees. But we are after strong, secure, deep beliefs that are backed up by evidence and skills and resources. Thank you.